You found it. <laughs> it's one of those places you feel the history, the roots under your feet. And this looks to be ancient as well. Put it yes. back in case you get into trouble. You get kicked out. <laughs> Left satisfied and mystified by the endless blue that was Agio Nicolaus's town, picturesque caves, coves, and natural surroundings, today marks the end of our leg in the Ionian, leaving Zakynthos as the famed Peloponnese calls us forward into its storied grasp. I hope everyone is warmed up for our trip to ancient Olympia. Oh, and don't forget your chariots. If you're new here, we are Martin, Sharon, and Taylor. Welcome to Sailing Trinity Season 2, A Greek Sun Odyssey, around the islands in 80 days. Days. Ready to dive into today's adventure, friends? If you'd like to see more of our Odyssey, hit the like and subscribe button now. It's our biggest motivation for bettering the channel. Without further ado, let's dive right in and escape the ordinary together. to head off from Zekinthos to head to Karakolo. I think it's a straight motor across today. There's barely any wind. We may be able to sail into the ports. So we'll see, we'll see, we'll see. Yes, we're about to leave. The morning ferry comes in. <laughs> but yeah, we just have to wait another few minutes for this beautiful sunshine. As we awake for an early departure from Zakynthos, it's time for a new chapter as we venture onwards towards Catacolo, making our first stop in the Peloponnese. The anticipation of fresh adventures fill the morning air as we prepare to slip lines. Let's check in. Okay, you're going into harbor mode? Yep, yeah, ready to slip? No. Slipping. Keep an eye on the chains, hey? She's in the pocket. All good. Bye, Zakynthos. Bye. That sexy boo. Well, Zakynthos was a wonderful place, and now we're off to Catacolo. Ancient Olympia. So we're on passage to Catacolo today. We just left Zakynthos, we're just motoring along the shore. Got a couple of rods out and some lures. See what happens. So I, can, I have visual anyway of Catacolo ahead. So it's a nice, cruisy, calm motor at the moment. All right, I'll keep you posted. Our sail begins peacefully along the coastline with calm and mainly windless conditions. With approximately 35 nautical miles to go, Andrew and Martin take the opportunity to do some fishing off the stern while Sharon and Taylor take in the coastal scenery. Wasn't quite a fish. Plastic bag. And <laughs> yeah. um, I've got the second one, it's just a hand line running off the back. Hopefully we'll catch something. <laughs> it's a bit of a dodgy rig though. Hoping for the best. <laughs> no more bag fish. Yeah, she was tight. She was super tight. Yeah. The last time. We were on a big sailing session. We tightened it in under pressure, so it was very, very, very tightly rolled. We didn't want it flapping because if you leave yourself flapping, it's going to eventually. Well, what's our ETA? Oh, it's 15 minutes. Could be an hour ETA. This point, yeah. an hour left. We finally got the captain to wear a hat and sunscreen. Yeah, I should do the same. Uh, yeah, the Australian indoctrination <laughs> in me. Yeah, and New Zealand, see? These Irish, they don't get it. There was no, no hat, no play for this man. That's ingrained in me. No hat, no play. The wind has picked up, obviously. I'm going to here because of the wind. <laughs> going into the marina for a stone soup. So we're going to head out into so that. I think it's five meters, really so pretty, pretty calm. But I'll let you know how we go. The difference in the water. 
and the wind. Look at you can tell it's considerably more protected than here. Epic. Yeah, it says it's very well protected. As soon as you come in. Cool. My finest regain. As we approach Catacolo, the calm is broken by a sudden build in wind. The crew springs into action, quickly adjusting sails to take advantage of the breeze and speed up our approach. We then came to the harbour, easing the sails as we moved past the towering cruise ships that provided us some great wind protection. Catacolo Harbour is a simple key wall that offers 25 berths with a draft of 3 metres, positioned right next to its bustling port neighbour. After mooring up safely, we readied ourselves to rest and recharge for the day of exploration soon to be upon us. lovely day today and we're heading somewhere very special but the ticket office is closed and the train's due in 20 minutes so we're gonna have to figure out where to get tickets yep so we we've asked somebody on the on the platform and they said that they were in the same boat literally and they've asked the local and the local just said that yeah you, you buy them on the train okay. so well let's hope that's the case Squeaky brake noises mark the beginning of our journey from Catacolo Port to ancient Olympia. The 45-minute journey offers a comfortable ride amidst the backdrop of stunning rural views and townscapes. A bargain as well at just 10 euro for an adult round-trip ticket. Spirits are high as we enjoy the scenic route, looking forward to the historical wonders we're about to explore alongside you guys. Speaking of, looks like we just arrived. Perfect timing. It's the end of the line, eh? We're here! Thank you. Bye! Bye. What are we going to do our warm up for the shop put in Java? <laughs> I did it yesterday. Oh, did you? Yeah. <laughs> I didn't know having a nap was counted as a warm up. Spent all day catching wind. Now we're catching flies. Well, look at all those tour buses. I assume it's somewhere around here. Lost. Lost in Olympia. All right. Well, let's walk up here then. Beautiful day. Very nice. Not too hot. Nice and cool amongst the trees, actually. We found it. <laughs> Full of tickets today. There's 24 marked out sites here. That is a lot of 
see what we get around to before we have to get the train back. We don't want to miss that. After finding our bearings and purchasing our tickets, we step back in time as we begin wandering through the expansive grounds of ancient Olympia. Nestled near Mount Cronion in the Peloponnese, this world-renowned site is the birthplace of the Olympic Games. This expansive sanctuary comprises over 24 historical structures, each with a purpose linked to ancient Greek culture, worship, or athletic competition. The temples, gymnasiums, and administrative buildings were built primarily from local limestone and marble, which skilled artisans shaped over many years. The Temple of Zeus, for instance, took nearly 15 years to complete and once housed a statue of Zeus that was among the seven wonders of the ancient world. The stadium, capable of seating 40,000, hosted the Olympic Games, making it a focal point of Hellenic society and an architectural marvel of its time. While athletes trained in the nearby gymnasium, which included bathing areas and meeting spaces for pre-game preparations, administrative and ceremonial buildings such as Buletiron, the council house, reveal the civic and social aspects of Olympia. In the Buletarion, athletes would take an oath of fair play before competing, while the Praetanian house, Sacred Hearths, where victorious athletes were honoured with feasts and celebrations. Today, the marvel that is Olympia attracts over 150,000 visitors annually with its complex, offering a blend of athletic history, architecture and religious art that draws people worldwide. The Archaeological Museum of Olympia also displays remarkable relics found on site, immersing visitors further into the legacy of this sacred and historic place. Look at this. Let me flip the cam. Wow, it's huge. Let's go in here. We find pine cones everywhere we go. Here's another one. And this looks to be ancient as well. <laughs> I wonder if it's part of the site. I'll pop it back and put it back in case you get into trouble. Can get kicked out. <laughs> There's a ton of restoration going on at the moment and if there's any of our Greek followers can translate it'd be interesting to find out what the restorations are just pop them into the comments. See how they haven't finished the roof. It's just like the rest of Greece so they're just tax evading. <laughs> Nero's bluff, <laughs> his villa. It's very interesting they've all been excavated. The fountain, that was a fountain, so if you can see here, it was two story. With the first story up here and it would pour down, there's a ball kind of statue in the middle. It would pour all the way down here into the second one and presumably flow. I wish it was functional right now because it was very hot. See, they've re um, reinforced it with some steel as well. There's quite a few reinforced things. The rest of them just fell. As we near the end of our two-hour ancient exploration, I discovered a series of plaques detailing the origins of the games. In tandem with my own research, join me now for some more thrilling info about this epic locale. So Olympia was originally a sanctuary dedicated to Zeus. Now, as far as I'm concerned, the first recorded Olympic Games were in 776 BC. Just like in modern times, the Games were held every four years for nearly 12 centuries here until they were eventually banned by Theodosius in 893 AD. Some people believe that ancient Olympia was chosen by Zeus himself as legend says that he struck this spot of the earth with his thunderbolt which creates uh, some kind of social connection in that realm of mythology. So hence the location and hence the extravagant nature of all the architecture. You'd expect nothing less than Debbie Zeus. During the Olympic Games it was a time uh, to kind of celebrate truce and peace. A lot of city-states that were in conflict with each other would agree to cease conflict um, in order to let the athletes compete which is pretty cool. <laughs> Women were not allowed to participate at all. I don't even think they were allowed to watch. Fact check me on that one. I mean we've obviously come a long way. I am a woman. Shock horror. 
and I'm here. In terms of who was allowed to compete, it was only freeborn men of Greece. So the victors of the games, as you can imagine, if you liken it to the Hunger Games, they were showered in riches and praise when they returned home. It was a, a, a huge honor to compete in the games, I presume, let alone to win them. As I said, they were branded as heroes. I, I believe there was a religious element as well. Oh, I don't know if I'd brand it religious. The competitors used to sacrifice to Zeus before competing in the games. Now, whether that be for good luck, out of formality, or out of, you know, if you don't do it, I'll smite you with a lightning bolt on the, on the running track. I don't know, but that's another cool little interesting thing that I learned on one of our plaques here. The difference between the modern and ancient Olympics is that there are a lot more events held and sports participated in in the modern Olympics. It says here that some of the main events in the ancient Olympics were running, jumping, wrestling, boxing and chariot racing. Now while some of those original games you would see in a modern time, I don't think you see any chariot racing in the modern day Olympics. Maybe we can start a petition to get into that, you never know. Oh look at this, worlds apart but still holding hands. <laughs> Here we have an Olympic we competitor, we Hercules, Hercules himself. Jab this is his prize for winning the... <laughs> what would you win? We all know that Martin would be the winner if there were an Olympic game for wearing the same t-shirt a hundred times. Excuse me, that's a, that's a new this one. This is a new t-shirt. And a new cap. And a new cap, yeah, he got that as a prize as well. Don't worry about Sharon. We might have to make an olive wreath. The winners were also awarded one of those for Hercules <laughs> here. I think we'll have to make you an olive wreath. Oh hell yeah. Yeah, for, for winning the hearts and minds of the people. As always. As always. Not allowed to take anything or destroy anything, but here on the floor there is a pre-existing fallen leaf and I think this will be the victor of wearing the same t-shirt competition um, yeah. and the selfie stick javelin. <laughs> Please stand all rise. <gasps> oh no, sacrilege, sacrilege. <laughs> That's it, thank you. So the water's four euro fifty here because they only have Aquapana and San Pellegrino. So if you do ever come here, they have free water taps right outside of the site. Just bring a water bottle. That's something we need to get back into the habit of. Um, but these these were five euro. They look very nice. Shall we get a test? Mm. Mm. Delicious. Oh, yum. Strawberry yeah. lemon. But that was magnificent. I really enjoyed that. We're going to enjoy our lovely lemonade, slushy lemonades. And then, yeah, we'll catch you guys back on the train. After a thoroughly enjoyable exploration, we soon make our way back through Olympia Town to the train station for our return journey back to Catacolo and more importantly, to Trinity. All right, we are back at the train station. <laughs> Trying to get everyone in the shot. Train station now for the 110 train. Yes. We found that was plenty of time. I mean, we took our time walking around the sites. We took footage, as you saw. Um, had a coffee actually, on the way out. Yeah, had a coffee on the way out. And had that little lemonade with plenty of time. So we arrived about 9.30. The train was on time. Yeah. And then, yeah, now it's it's about 10, 10, to, 10, one. 10 to 1. And the train's at 8 past, 10 past 1, if you will. The station's a, what, a 10 minute walk? I mean, if you visit here yourself, it's it's very, very good. There's also plenty of coaches and buses. And there's a sign just behind me that points to Patras, Athens, Kalamata. So I think obviously it's a very popular site. Um, so you'd be able to visit here. Yep, so I hope you enjoyed the mythology, the ancient sites, and the first part of our uh, journey through the Peloponnese. Yeah, um, finally. Yeah, uh, looking forward to seeing you at the next couple of destinations. We have a lot more to, to bring you away. So see you in the next episode, guys. Laters. Right, let's make sure we don't miss that train. Let's go, let's go, go, go. This episode wraps up with the crew reflecting on our first taste of the Peloponnese. From a tranquil sail to the historical depths of ancient Olympia, it's been a day of contrast and discoveries, one that we are grateful to have brought you on. Join us next week as we continue exploring this new and extremely storied region of Greece. Take a second to subscribe now and hit the notification bell to stay involved in our next adventure. What did you guys think of our very own Hercules, huh? Share your thoughts in the comments below and the crew will get back to it. We can't wait to escape the ordinary with you. See you there, guys.